side of the aircraft, which is the left side of this case. Um, it depends on the visibility of how far out I can scan. But I basically go back and forth, out and in, out and in, and checking for push systems or trees, or we have trees that show the symptoms. We find huge devastated areas of uh, of ohia trees all across uh, Big Island, mostly in uh, the lower Puna area where the first kind of hotspot was. But unfortunately we found a new hotspot on the Kona side um, and we were really shocked to see that much dying trees over there and th that are dying as we speak over there. But yeah, look at it, you know, greater than 50% now. The majority of the dark leaf is all guava, which is, uh, you know, invasive. We had a whole bunch of surveys, especially Big Island, where we focused most of our uh, intensity. And it went up from originally 32,000 acres to now, as we finished uh, the island, to about 50,000 acres. That um, show the symptoms. It is not yet confirmed that it is actually rod. It all has to be ground truth by taking samples and sending it to the lab. So these numbers that we found are just trees that have the symptoms, but we cannot be sure that yeah, they are. Unfortunately, it's only small scale. It is a very rapid moving disease. We already know that. We confirmed um, these new outbreaks on the Kona side and who knows how it got over there. Um, the researchers were as shocked as us when they saw how, um, how widespread it is over there in such a short amount of time. I mean, we, uh, we found that just a few months ago and it's already such a big area that it's really scary, actually. We've, during our surveys, we found uh, trees that show similar symptoms, but um, at this point, we don't believe that it is on other islands. Um, there are samples taken constantly on other islands too. They are sent to the lab, but so far none of them have been confirmed. Um, but a lot of these uh, trees that we found during our survey still have to be uh, sampled, and um, this is going to be a, a longer you know, process of sampling those. But so far, luckily, we haven't found any. And um, just because we find a dying ohia tree doesn't mean that it is raw. There is dozens of other diseases that kill uh, ohia that are not as, um, as severe as rapid ohia death. I want to emphasize that we have a very, very efficient and very widespread collaborative working group in place um, where all agencies are, are, all natural resource management agencies are part of. And, um, we have meetings on a monthly basis where we discuss the latest, um, the latest uh, developments of, of the disease, of the research, of outreach activities. Um, so this has been very, very helpful in coordinating all the different activities that are going on in the state. As a forester and the, the guy who's up in the helicopter doing the, most, if not all, the surveys, what goes through your mind when you fly over a beautiful Ohia forest on the Big Island and it's brown and dead? You know, it's when you see, and I, I've been lucky enough to see pristine forest, uh, na native forest areas uh, with, you know, all those beautiful components of it. And uh, when you spend time up in, in Ohia forest, you see that Ohia is like the backbone of this forest. Um, it is one of our major uh, tree species, one, one of the most important tree species. And seeing this um, getting eradicated almost in such a fast, uh, fast speed is, is really frightening because we have plenty of invasive species that are just waiting to take over when this ground cover is gone. Um, who knows what is left over after that? You know, we will have to see how, how that turns out over time. But at this time, 
as as soon as a forest is infected with Rapidohia death, it, it doesn't look good. It it takes out one tree after the next. It might not kill all of them, but it definitely creates room for invasive species to come in to to stress the whole ecosystem and potentially change it to a to a non-native one.